Well, hey, everybody. First and foremost, happy Father's Day, everybody, yesterday. Uh, I know it's a bit late, but it's been a while since I've been able to do a video. I'm at my work desk for a change. Now, today, I'm going to show you two things. How to make a field and how to carve some rock. All right. I already put a little bit of water in the bottom of this cup. I ain't going to be using much sculpting more. Well, paper mache, whatever you want to use. Yeah. It ain't going to take much to do this. Uh, two quick handfuls and the amount of water that I already got. If I need more water, I'll jump up and grab some. But I should not need more water. I need a plastic butter knife to stir this all up. Get down on that. this stuff this time not runny at all you want it to be rather thick something that'll actually hold a carving all right I'll just take a glob of it mash it on there spread it out um, I like to do is towards the top where a lot of your uh, grass and all still coming back. Um, just leave it pretty well blank. Some place the grass can stick to. All right, just in on there. Yeah, that'll be for rock. And I'm probably going to need more for the field, but I'm going to see what I can do here. And the reason why I'm showing you both of these techniques at the same time is because they're very much the same. I've actually used the field technique on my layout already. And uh, I can give you an overview of that some other time. Um, so you could just spread this on. You could literally do this right over top of existing scenery too and just kind of blend it in. It ain't very hard to do. Sometimes it's enough to drive you nuts though. But if you really actually take your time with it, I know it looks like I'm kind of in a hurry, but I'm actually not. I just know when I'm doing well enough that I can get it done a little quicker. All right. They're smoothing both on kind of thin. Now, fields are normally plowed and planted. You take just a plastic fork. I know that this one's kind of clear, so it's probably hard to see. But you just take your fork or cone or whatever you have and as long as you drag it through there pretty well straight you're good and this is always always hard to see even by the naked eye before all the painting and weathering and everything else is done but that's the only thing you'll use a fork for I don't know how well you can see the detail on that but it just grooves Literally, the deeper ruts are probably where the tractor tire hit twice. That's it. All right. When it comes to the rock, all right, sedimentary rock just pretty much follows the curvature of the earth. When it's cut through, it just has a line that looks like the arc of the original hill. Other rocks can have diagonal cuts to it and everything else, but sedimentary is probably your most often seen. And just get through and make some random lines. They don't have to be perfect. They don't have to be right on top of each other. Matter of fact, if they cross, it even gives it more depth. Um, basically, that's all there is to it. You can scrape off the excess and let it dry and use it for tillis. But, I would say use multiple styles of knives. Multiple sizes, multiple shapes. The more different uh, size grooves you can get into it the better all right when it comes to the end knock off the excess just by tapping it down 
and I don't know how well you can see that either, but that's just the grooves that I use for rock. I don't even know if I'm on screen to be honest with you. Um, there, let me move the camera now. Right. That's literally what it is. It's just nice and sedimentary rock. This one here is a field. And you can see the different rows in it and everything else. This is more H2 scale. When I do N scale, I just get a finer comb. And I don't think I even have an H2 scale tractor, but I have a 164 scale, so I can put it on there and make it look right for you at the end. All right. There's another two steps involved to both of these processes to get both of those right. And I will be showing you those next week and the week after. But I know I've had a lot of comments on how I did my rocks. That's how I'm doing my rocks. This is how I do my fields. All right. We get uh, to the end and um, you'll know exactly what to do. There's going to be another two segments on this, maybe three. All right. Let me get this thing spun around here. As well as I can. Eh, I'm going to get hung up. I might as well just do it this way. Um, let's see if I even got a spot to put this. New workbench. I'm just working everything out. Now, I'm glad that I've influenced some of you to get back to work or some of you to even start scenery. Just remember, work slow. Take your time. Anything that you mess up in model trains, you can always rip out and try again. It's not a difficult, it's not you got to stick to everything that you know. You got to stick with this, you got to stick with that. It's your hobby. You have fun with it, alright? My way is just my way. I've learned it to be the easiest for me. Somebody else might have found something easier for them. But... In my final comments here, I'm just pretty much saying, enjoy it. Take your time on it. If you put something down and you don't like it, leave it alone until you get a better idea. Hey, they come to me in the middle of the night sometimes and I don't even know where the heck they come from. Because I'll be thinking of something completely different and go, hey, I could use this for this. So, don't worry about it. I'm going to be brush painting these so you'll also see how I do the brush painting technique a little bit better. And you know have fun this is a hobby of fun if somebody does it one way they do it one way if you do it another you do it your way but it's your hobby make it yours have a good one